Just like the laws of physics help us to understand how the world around us works, there are also spiritual laws that tell us how the universe actually works on the spiritual level. So the fundamental spiritual laws are all summed up in the Hermetic Principles, the seven great Hermetic Laws. And today we're going to be looking at the Law of Rhythm, which is Hermetic Principle number five. In this video I'm going to explain what the Law of Rhythm is, and we're going to look at why it's important to be aware of the Law of Rhythm in your own life, why it's super important to be aware of it now at this time in history, and also some ways that we can use the Law of Rhythm to get better balance in our life and to start manifesting the things we want to see in our life. So very simply put, the law of rhythm states that things happen in cycles. What goes up must come down. What goes down must come up. Things begin, they ascend, they descend, they end, and they begin again. So I'm standing here in the woods just a few weeks ago. It was um, fairly wet, the, the leaves were all green, it was warm, I would have been standing here in a t-shirt, and now it's gotten dry, it's windy, uh, it's gotten pretty cold, chilly, and the leaves are turning colors, they're falling. Okay, it's a season of autumn, and we know in, in my part of the world that's going to be followed by winter with deep snows, and after that, the spring, the, the plants coming up out of the ground, coming back to life, and so on, back to summer. Okay, so this is the life cycle, the, life, the cycle of the seasons. Um, we see the law of rhythm also in the cycle of the breath, the motion of the stars and the planets. And uh, the tides, our own body's rhythms, the circadian rhythms, the rise and fall of consciousness, and in our moods, right? We all have moods that go up and down, um, often with the seasons or with other things that are happening, or just our internal body clock, okay? So these are the rhythms that we all live with, and as you become more aware of them and start to really observe and notice them, you'll start to be able a little bit better to predict what might be coming your way. Okay, um, it's also really important to realize that when we start noticing rhythms, we'll usually notice some kind of polarity, um, as in winter to summer, right, is one polarity, high tide to low tide. And uh, the law of rhythm and the law of polarity are very closely related. So if you haven't yet checked out my law of polarity video, I'll leave the link right up here or in the description box below. Go check that out because these two work together. And when you are aware of both, there's ways that you can use them both to really help yourself to get out of any kind of constraining patterns that you might be in. Okay, so uh, why is it important <laughs> to to be aware of the law of rhythm? Uh, like what I just said, we, we all have these patterns that we're in and we can get really caught up in the rhythm, right? Um, if, if you're not aware of, say, the rhythm of the tide, right? People can get swept away by the tides, and that can be in a metaphorical sense too, right? We all have the emotional tides, and you can really easily get swept away, swept here and there, and just kind of float around with the tides, which is what the vast minor majority of humanity does, just kind of um, gets swept back and forth, taken by surprise by things that really are going in accordance with the laws of rhythm, and if 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 people were a little bit more aware, and I'm including myself, right, of, of some of these patterns, it becomes a lot easier to prepare, okay? So, for instance, um, people that follow the stock market, there's patterns, there's ups and downs, right? And people who are really good at it can 
profit from these ups and downs. Um, the real estate market, right? Um, or even our own emotional reaction to real estate. Realtors talk about the seven year itch, right? There's an average of about seven years where a person's looking for another house. And a lot of times a person may not even be realizing that, that they have the seven year itch, right? The realtor knows. <laughs> and they might be contacting you just before that seven year itch cycle comes along. But here's where it can get kind of fun if you're aware of the seven year itch and maybe yours is a five year itch or a nine year itch, right? It may, it, it can vary from individual to individual. But if you're aware that this cycle exists, then you can proactively plan for it, okay? If you bought your house maybe five years ago, <laughs> chances are you might start getting that feeling of, oh, maybe it's time to start looking around, right? And um, so, now is the time, if that's the case for you, to really step out of the emotional field and into your logical field and say, hey, you know, does this house really suit my needs, right? Before the emotional wave, tidal wave starts to carry you away, right? And if not, what do I really need, right? And also being aware that the real estate market itself has its cycles, okay? So, like if your seven year itch cycle comes up at a time when the real estate mar market is in a bubble, guess what's likely to happen, right? You're likely to, you know, buy a house that's really overinflated. And then the value by the time you're ready to sell and move on again might have really crashed, right? So it's really important to just be aware of your own cycles and the cycles of the world around you. So why is the law of rhythm so important right now? Because we're in this, this time of change and flux, flux where we're coming to the end of a huge, huge, huge cycle, right? Going through this kind of end time of of one big cycle and moving into starting the beginning time of another one, right? And so being aware of this, because we're in this period of time where we're starting to see a lot of chaos in the world, a lot of very kind of disturbing things happening in the world around us, a lot of change, a lot of upset, and the mind wants stability. So the mind tends to look at what's happening and say, oh, this is the way it is. And then it can be, you know, it's very easy for the emotional mind, the animal mind, right, to get really sucked down into depression, into hopelessness, right? Um, seeing these, you know, the, the state of the world or maybe the state of your life where you're at. Maybe you're in a dark night of the soul, right? And the animal part of your brain is going to be like, oh, this is terrible, <laughs> right? Um, but knowledge of the law of rhythm can assist you in realizing that, okay, this too shall pass. And so the law of rhythm can help us to have hope and to sustain that hope and actually use that hope as something that we can use to bring the, the next iteration of something that's higher or more desirable into our lives or into the world. Okay. And so this brings me back again to this law of rhythm versus the law of polarity. And one of the biggest polarities out there is the polarity between the temporal world, the world of time and space that we're living in, this material physical world that we're in, and the spiritual world, right? The world of the eternal. And so we all exist within both of these polarities. And the more you can be aware of that, what it does is it allows you to kind of rise above whatever's happening in the material plane. It allows you to rise above your emotions, right? But this takes a lot of spiritual development, right? Um, it takes consistency in the practice, in your meditation practice, in your um, study of spirituality, right? If you're, if you're practicing consistently, you can start spending more time in or being able to access those higher planes more easily. And that, what that does is allows you to actually use this law of rhythm. We can never get away from the rhythms and the cycles. That's a given. That's always going to be there as long as we're embodied here in the world. But what we can do is access more and more those upper etheric realms where 
everything is constant, okay? And, and that allows you to have this higher perspective where you can look at the cycles, right? The ups and downs and kind of start to choose where do you want to anchor in? Where in the cycle do you want to anchor in, right? Um, and then to start to kind of neutralize some of these ups and downs, right? So if you, especially if you have, say, bipolar tendencies or anything like that, as I do, um, you can, with a lot of practice in the meditation, it helps to stabilize you because you are more able to reach into these, kind of that eternal state of being. Okay, now I'm by no means a master at this, still really working at it, but I, I can tell you from experience looking back at my life over the past three year, few years and working on, you know, developing those higher chakras it, and stabilizing the lower ones, it can help you a lot to, to overcome the tendency to be swept away by the law of rhythm. So one of the most powerful techniques that I'm aware of for rising above is the practice of awareness or mindfulness combined with gratitude. Okay, so if you, you know, as you go throughout your day, just being aware of your emotional level and where it's at, right? And when you catch yourself down in the dumps or feeling angry or upset or frustrated or depressed or whatever it is, Getting back in the heart space, touch the heart, and calling in gratitude is often, I find, the easiest way to kind of get back into that heart space. Sometimes you need to physically release, right? If, especially if you're angry, <laughs> sometimes go for a run, go work out, whatever it is. Or if you're depressed, sometimes you gotta, you know, get yourself up and moving. But in combination with that, getting into that heart space and calling in the gratitude can really really help to get you out of that flux and flow ebb and flow of, of rhythm and back into more of an eternal uh, steady sort of mindset thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed this you might want to check out the rest of my spiritual laws playlist i'll be doing a few more of these videos to at least complete the seven hermetic principles a video for each of those so be sure to like, share, subscribe, and remember you were born to be free.